Hi, and welcome to module three of lecture six. In the previous module, we talked about higher order derivatives and how they help encode the shape of a function. In this module, we're gonna, talk, we're gonna focus on the second derivative and talk about two important related concepts, concavity and convexity. Let's start with a concave function, since that occurs more often. Concave as a concept is best understood graphically so let's just draw a sort of typical concave function. This might be a log um, or a square root of x. It's a function that has this characteristic shape. Now what's characteristic about this? Well, this is a, an increasing concave function. So the function is getting bigger and bigger. It's increasing. But it's increasing at an ever slower rate. The slope of the function, as you can tell, sort of observe visually, is increasing pretty quickly over here. Um, in this red region in the lower left. But by the time we get up here, it's increasing, and this should be increasing still, it's increasing pretty slowly. So the slope is decreasing. So a concave function starts off with a higher, a concave increasing function starts off with a positive slope, and then the slope stays positive, but gets smaller and smaller and smaller. It's a concave function. A concave function it's represented by, and I should not have deleted, erased that. A concave function is represented, there's the function again, um, by any function in which if you draw, or rather it's, it's um, characteristic is that any, any line you draw that connects two points on the function is gonna occur below the function itself. So if this is the line, then the function in red over here is always above the line between them. In practice, this means, or further formally, this means that if I talk about the function, if this is x1 and this is x2, then any combination of x1 plus x2, where this combination this is a lambda over here. Um, this is a lambda as well. Lambda is between 0 and 1, so this is a combination of x1 and x2. Any combination, so any, so f at any point from here to here is going to be at least as big as any combination, the same exact combination of the function at the two points, which is this line right here in blue. Okay. This is the line connecting this point with this point, these two points and x points, whereas this over here is the red line itself, the curve of the function. And any point in the function on the left here is going to be at least as big as any point in the line joining the two endpoints, the x points right over there on the, uh, on the, on the drawing. If that um, comparison is actually strict, so instead of a greater than sign, it, instead of a greater than or equal to sign, it's a greater than sign, then we say the function is strictly concave. So we have concave is the first definition down there, and strictly concave is the second definition down there. So concave uses a greater than or equal to, con strictly concave uses a greater than, which is always strictly above the line. Why do we care about these things? Um, well, two reasons. In terms of this lecture, we care about concave functions because if a function is concave around a local um, extremum, then we're going to discover that the local extremum is going to be a local maximum. In contrast, well, I'll say later, if it's not concave in the point, it's not going to be a local maximum. So being concave in the point will help tell us if that extremum is a maximum or a minimum without having to actually draw a picture of it. Now, you might be asking, well, that's fine. Um, I'll get to the second um, point later. But you mentioned that's fine, but we have this complicated 
expression down here to determine concavity, that's not very helpful. We're really going to check that every time? No, we're not going to do that. Before we get to that, though, the second point of importance here for the concave function is that concave functions, when used in utility functions, generally represent preferences of a certain type. In this case, preferences for risk aversion. So a concave function tends to represent a utility in which you get decreasing returns for additional benefits. So if this were, say, money, if this function I drew were utility for money, it would say that the more money you have, the less marginal benefit each additional dollar gets you. That tends to mean you are less likely to prefer um, lotteries or, or uncertainty over money. You prefer to get some sure amount of money now than take the risk that even more money, because even more money is less important to you than losing the money you have already. Because the money you have already is more important to you than getting additional money. Because each additional dollar you would get is less and less important to you. This represents risk aversion, and we'll see that more in the next part of the class. So those are the two major ways you can see concavity. Um, primarily, you'll see it in terms of helping you maximize stuff, or minim um, but you also can see it in terms of um, utility functions. And the two are related. You'll often find assumptions on utility that have them be concave. That's designed so you can maximize utility. Okay. So that's concavity. Um, but again, we'll go back to your quite valid point that you might have had, which is we're not going to try to deal with this every time. The good thing is we don't have to. Think about what we said at the beginning of this module. A concave function is one in which, a concave increasing function is one in which as you, incre as you are increasing, the rate of increase gets slower and slower and slower. What does that mean? Well, the first derivative is the rate of increase. So the first derivative might start off highly positive, but will get less and less and less because the rate of increase gets slower and slower and slower. And as the rate of increase gets slower, the slope of the first derivative gets less. Okay. So far so good. So for any concave function, the slope of the first for any concave increasing function, sorry, the slope of the first derivative is getting less and less and less. This is true for all concave, but it's harder to see. For decreasing functions. So for a nice increasing function, the slope of the of the first the slope of the line is getting less and less and less, implying that the first derivative is getting smaller and smaller and smaller while still staying positive. How can we use that? Well, if the first derivative is the slope of the function itself, then the second derivative is the slope of the first derivative. Let me say that again. The first derivative is the slope of the function at each point. The entire first derivative at all points is itself a function. The derivative of that function represents its slope. Therefore, the second derivative represents the slope of the first derivative function, which itself is the slope of the original function. Therefore, the second derivative tells you what the slope of the first derivative is. If the first derivative is decreasing because the slope of the original function is decreasing, then the second derivative must be negative. Let me say again. If the first derivative is decreasing because the slope of the original function is decreasing, then the slope of the first derivative must be negative to represent its decreasing slope. If it's negative, then the um, second derivative, if the slope of the first derivative is negative, that means the second derivative is negative. Therefore, any concave function has a second derivative that is less than or equal to zero. A strictly concave function has a second derivative that is strictly less than zero. And that is going to be a much easier way to check concavity for any continuously differentiable function, for any twice continuously differentiable function, than using this more formal, more um, general definition is. Now, this star definition is more general. Note that this does not require this to be continuous. Right? It doesn't require much of anything out of it. It requires that you can draw a line between two points and the, line, the curve itself will be above the line. 
you don't have to be able to differentiate f at all. The fact that this boxed one over here, um, the second derivative condition requires you to be able to differentiate the function. That said, in practice, most examples people use when they maximize are differentiable functions, and it's much easier to differentiate a function twice than try to check that condition often. So this one up here, the one we're going to start with blue, is going to be the one we're going to use most often to check for maxima. That's a concave function. And you see concave functions most often because most often we're trying to maximize something. Okay. So that's that. Um, now, what about the opposite? Well, the opposite of a concave function is a convex function. A convex function is one in which the line drawing any two points is always above the curve. So if this is x1 and this is x2, then if we again draw the curve in red, and the curve is again the combination, the function, the evaluation, the evaluation of the function at any combination of these two points, the red part, then it's going to be less than or equal to the combination of these two endpoints right here and here. And that's given by this. This is a convex function. If it's strictly less than, it's a strictly convex function. Convex functions, a convex increasing function rather, is one in which the slope of the function itself starts off relatively low down here and increases as the function gets greater. x squared is a pretty common convex function that you see often in the literature, and its slope is increasing. Now again, just like for concave functions, you can use a second derivative for this. Right? So if the slope starts off lower and gets hot greater, then the slope is increasing. The slope is the first derivative, so for a convex function, the first derivative is increasing. That means it has a positive slope. I mean, its slope is increasing, which means the second derivative is positive. So for a convex function, this, the slope of the second derivative is positive, and for a strictly convex function, it is strictly greater than zero, strictly positive. Rather, so for a convex function, the slope is non-negative. Sorry, for a convex function, the slope, the second derivative is non-negative, and for a strictly convex function, the second derivative is strictly positive. Why do we care about convex functions? Well, again, there are two reasons. The one we're going to deal with most often is that if you have a convex function, then any minimum down here, over here, any extremum over there is actually a minimum. So if you have a function that's convex locally around some extremum, that extremum is a minimum. So we're going to use that to identify minima. And minima are useful for minimizing loss or for minimizing error in some application of statistics like ordinarily squares. The other reason we use convex functions is that sometimes you want to ex um, express some element of utility, say, that has increasing um, marginal returns, oftentimes it's increasing marginal cost. So we use cost functions are often convex because the more you use, um, the more you need of some, say, uh, object to create something, the more expensive future um, bits of that object are, future quantities of that object are. Um, or you might have a person who's risk seeking, who actually prefers risk. We'll deal with that again more in the next part. But if future gains are more important to you than present losses, then you might want to you, you might be willing to take a gamble to get those future gains, even though it might lose your present stuff, because the future gains are so much more important to you than the present. That's a risk seeking kind of person. For completeness, um, well, I'll get to that in a second. So that's convex functions. In between, sort of the other canonical example is a linear function. A linear function is neither convex nor concave. 
or rather it's both convex and concave, but not strictly convex nor strictly concave. The reason is a linear function is something like this. And this is strictly speaking an affine function, but let's ignore that for now. Its derivative is a, here a is positive, it doesn't have to be. The second derivative is zero. That means it satisfies the requirements to be convex and concave, but not strictly convex and not strictly concave. Because of that, um, A, well, there's no critical points anyway. Um, this represents a risk neutral person who doesn't actually care about risks. Future gains are the same to this person as losses. So a gamble is the same as the expected value of the gamble. All those terms will be defined much better in the next part of the course when we do uncertainty. But this just gives you a handle on where this will give you a sort of preview for where we'll see more concave and convex popping up. This won't be used, the linear functions won't be used very much in maximizing because if you notice, there's no maximum in the middle here. There's no um, extremum in the middle on this function. It's at the edges. Um, so that's basically it. Um, concavity and convexity represent the curvature of the function around any point. Um, concavity is when it's sort of curved downward. And sometimes you see the word concave down apply to that. I mean, the same thing as concave. Um, convexity is when the function is curved upward. Sometimes you see the words concave up apply to that. It's a horrible use of terms because using the word concave twice is pointless. That's convex. So convex is upward, concave is downward. Convex attaches to minima, concave attaches to maxima. And finally, I should say in conclusion that even though all the examples we've given so far have been increasing functions, there's nothing special about increasing functions in terms of concavity and convexity. Um, this is still a linear function, even if it's decreasing. If you want, this is a decreasing. Uh, I should. Yeah, this is a. Well, it's decreasing from here on. It's a decreasing concave function. The line drawing the two points is still below the function itself. Even though it's decreasing in terms of derivatives, the slope is negative from here on. So the first derivative is negative, but it's getting more and more negative. Over here, it's just a little bit negative. Right Down here, it's very negative. So the first derivative gets getting smaller and smaller and smaller, implying the second derivative um, is negative as well, because the first derivative is getting increasingly small or more and more negative, which makes the second derivative negative as well. So it still works just fine. And finally, this is a decreasing concave function, sorry, convex function. The line joining two points is still above the curve itself. In terms of derivatives, it starts off strongly decreasing, so the, the um, derivative, the first derivative is very negative up there, but down here, the first derivative is much less negative. So the degree to which the first derivative is negative is decreasing. So in a sense, the first derivative is increasing, meaning the second derivative is also increasing. So again, a concave decreasing function still has a decreasing first derivative. It's getting more and more negative instead of less and less positive. So the second derivative is still negative. A decreasing convex function, um, the second derivative, the first derivative is still, is still um, in this case, um, increasing, but instead of being more and more positive, it's less and less negative. But everything still works just fine for decreasing functions. You just see them less often. Thank you very much.